own his family, Shavua to, you know, <clears throat> everyone, you know, I know everybody been refreshed and everybody is ran to go uh, back home again. So again, uh, we, we got to be clear that we ain't literally talking about going any place in any direction, <laughs> but, but we are talking about going someplace in our energetic conceptualization of how consciousness, you know, is exactly, you know, as the Eta has laid it out for us. And the band has been, you know, just great in how he has put things together and given us this framework to work from. He stated uh, a week ago, two weeks ago, where it says, everything is what? Sound and light, right? Right. This is this is our foundation as we were moving in the last two weeks or so. So I'm going to put that in a perspective and I want everyone to listen to it. And then it's gonna lead us out of this introduction here into a statement that possibly some of you will will have a problem with, but it's all right because we're going to use it to verify exactly how Mario's dream played into this and how consciousness, you understand, is tied to all things and all things in consciousness and all things is consciousness. So bear with us. Everything is sound and light. Everything is caused by consciousness moving from rest into, into animation. Therefore, everything exists is in some way connected to consciousness. That means that everything is in you because you are everything. Because consciousness moved from the state of wholeness at rest, being downward by sound, light, waves, and particles. This motion animated animation created a split, separation, and division that are now symbols, forms, and images of everything. This is inclusive of the material and the non-material, the good and the bad, be it physical or non-physical. This introduction may be questioned by the family, yet before we do that, let us return our attention to the creative process of consciousness. Moreover, consciousness desire to observe itself through itself. Consciousness had to put itself in everything from the non-material to the material, that it could reflect consciousness, observing consciousness as the observer of consciousness. Now, I, I, I put that together because I wanted to have this as a, a framework and a foundation for us to work toward today to gain a greater understanding of many of the things that we spoke of yesterday that was not succinctly, you know, uh, conceptualized and understood some possibly in dualism, some possibly in holism. But if we in duality, trying to get out of duality into wholeness, we are in the, on the ladder. And again, talked about this ladder starting at this lower level of 20 and journeying onward up. And as um, David Hawkins gives us to a thousand. But what we're talking about 
is on on and on and on and on and on and on on and into eternity so hopefully this will help the family to understand the concepts i shared yesterday you know in respect to the blood the heart the brain and the mind and how we're going to do that we're going to return to the scripture to get a verification of something and show us how again how magnificent and how brilliant the ancestors were now the ancestors reveal something to me that is found in the book of daniel and most of us have read daniel you know and the daniel being put in the fiery furnace and all of that we haven't read that and we've had that you know laid out for us but let's put it in a context that we can understand in respect to the brain you know the mind the heart you know and the blood because this was a question that came up yesterday um, about the blood being you know contaminated so we're going to hear something if we go to daniel the sixth chapter verse 14 and would you have it daniel 6 and 14 this is the only place in the scripture that this particular term is used and how i got this it didn't come through me through um strongs but there's a strong number in other words strongs didn't deal with it but jeff benner something moved him to deal with it so this was uh, taken from the reference that is in jeff benner that gave me this particular reference scripture re scriptural reference it wasn't found in saw i mean strong's concordance but it was there and the number is 1079 and all this have to do with the heart now and this is going to verify something for us it's going to verify something for us now for the family you're going to have to read these references here we're not going to deal with all of them but you're going to have to deal with um these references that we're going to give after we read jenna i mean uh daniel 6 and 14 you're going to have to deal with these references in genesis to really really appreciate what has been given to you in these revelations that uh is coming forward so let's go to daniel 6 and 14. could you read what it says there uh for us Eti? all right and it reads like this then the king when he heard these words was sore displeased with himself and he set his heart on daniel to deliver him and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him now if you remember yesterday the term of the sun that was going down we we read that yesterday right we read that yesterday but we didn't have a reference to connect this up but all this had to do with now this heart now so we read here where the and if we go up a couple of verses where we see the Eta, could you go up uh just because i want the family to get this go up uh three verses that's 14 go up three verses okay 11 through that's uh let's see right there where you're 11 start at 11. okay then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. All right, right there, okay, go ahead. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Has thou- The king has made a decree, this is the key. Now we gotta see how this decree, you know, affects us today. Because when we think of decrees, you know, we think of laws that have been established and that you have to keep these laws but again you got to go back to the creative process again 
falling what out of what wholeness and divinity right. into dualism. This is very important. Continue, Etan. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? Uh-huh. Now here we go, the den of lions, family. Continue. And the king answered and said, the thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said, okay. the king. Be awesome, he said, okay, read. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king. Nor well, he regard read that again, he regardeth what? Not thee. Uh-huh. O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore pleased, displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. So now, Daniel was doing something and we always wonder, you know, when we read Daniel, well, how did these things happen to Daniel and it didn't affect him? So, but Daniel never what? He never ever had any respect or value of the king's decree. That's a key point now. Right. So since he didn't have a desire or respect for the king's laws, he must have a desire and respect and value for something else that in regards to that which he did have it was able to what work for him and protect him i want us to hear this now because let's look at this word here the word there is 1079 and 1079 the hebrew is like baal b-a-w-l english phonetics okay and it means anxiety, okay? But it's from 1080. Now, but it means anxiety. By implying, by implying the heart as its seat, follow, as its seat, okay? Then it says 1086 corresponds to 1086. And that corresponds is B-E-L dash A-W, Baal. And it says, but use only in a mental sense. Now hear me, in a mental sense. Now we come to the mind, right? Anything mental is the mind, the mental sense to afflict or wear out so i want to go back to what we've been talking about about this mind and why it's so vital for us to understand how the mind has caused so much confusion 1086 is by law b-a-w dash l-a-w a primitive root to fail so what's calling failure is the mind by implying to wear out. Now, but I know you say, well, my, you about, no, we're not talking about nothing physical. I want to go back to the introduction. But we got to see this is energetic. We got to see this is energetic, not physically. When we talk about consciousness, we ain't talking about nothing physical. When we talk about the heart, the brain, these are organs that are what? Moving and functioning according to consciousness. In other words, it ain't the mind that's causing the organs to what live and function. It's consciousness because it is the source of all things. It's the creative process. Continuing on, a primitive root to fail by implying to wear out, to decay. And the causative means to consume, 
to spend, spend time, consume, to enjoy through a period of time, a long continuous time, or become or make or wax old and waste. Now we're going to use this reference here to verify this. Genesis, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 15. Now we see we done come forward. Now we're going back. We talk about this ladder that Jacob has been talking about, ascension and descension. Got to hear me now. We ain't talking about no physical ladder. Genesis 15, verses 1 through 15. Now you're going to have to read in order for you to get this. We're going to read them, but we're not going to spend any time on them. We're going to what? Give some time to 9 through 15, six verses. They become instructed. They become instructed. But Genesis 15, verses 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Or we can just, yeah, okay, we'll do it that way. We'll do it that way. We want to read them, but we're going to only spend time with 9 through 15 because I want you to hear it. you got to hear this. you got to read it so that you understand here about this mind and how this mind does what you know it plays out we've been utilizing it and it didn't worn out it didn't fade out there's no need for us to what give any value to that which done decay it ain't no benefit now it's all about consciousness right now everything is about consciousness right now all right Genesis 15 verses 1 through 9 and then verses 9 through 15. Excellent. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my, my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. Lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, take a heifer of three years old and a she goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon verses nine through 15. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep there we go again. The sun was going down. Uh huh. A deep sleep fell upon Abram, and uh -huh. lo, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs. I don't believe this. I really, <laughs> I, re I really don't even believe this. I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead on and let you do your thing. <laughs> and he shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also 
that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou <laughs> shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. <laughs> uh, see, I'm not I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm not gonna say nothing till I till I till, till I get the rock, till I get the ball. <laughs> uh, this is this is uh family. You know, it's just uh it's just I I don't have words to give thanks and appreciation Look. as to what has been taking place online with my bane and all the family. <laughs> uh, it's it's just it's no words. Uh, it is not. Feeling, we've been talking about this feeling, the feeling that I have received. You know, and it's it's about this feeling. Yeah. But it's about this feeling not from the mind it's about this feeling from what's in your heart based up on consciousness animating your heart not the mind yes not duality wholeness unity divinity when you begin to taste it you begin to smell it you begin all sense organ is activated right hear me family you know and, and just in simple family, just in simple, we can see here how the vision that Abraham came up, he said it was a vision of horror. What has it been? And we thought this horror was really, you understand, know just, you know, African American people in the captivity of the United States of America, that, 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 that. hey, all of humanity. Right. Everybody in this physical plane is what? That's what he saw. And this is what is being depicted. A state of horror, conditions as unbelievable, caused by devolution into the lower realms of, you understand, the mind that caused everybody to continue to, what, go down the ladder into complete dumbness ignorance just unbelievable condition that there's no way out of it except you reach rock bottom and what consciousness becomes the activator of your process of ascension out of here out of that predicament i mean now, it's like listen now see uh, go ahead Ita. i i gotta put it on pause go ahead <laughs> We 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 putting this together step by step. See, everything that you've been trying, we've been trying to understand. We've been trying to understand, and it kept us under. We never, you know, saying understood the power of words. Yeah. Now we are yeah. saying we're trying to understand now, not yeah. understand. That's correct. We're trying to understand now and. I'm trying to connect us to showing us how this mind is responsible for the continued devolution into this, you know, the lower realm of what we call abstract artificial intelligence. Yes. This is what it then put us in. Yes. Abstract artificial intelligence. Now that element is said to be outside of us. And it is animated by dualism. Yes. The frequency of duality. So in this frequency of duality, there's no way for you to connect yourself to any kind of holistic divinity you must continue to see yourself as what separated from divinity and there's going to be you know saying someone that's going to come hopefully and help you what come to what re you know acknowledge 
your acquaintance with, you understand, with the creator, which was really yourself, as each I just explained That's it, right. we became a stranger to our own divinity, to our own self. Now I see. Huh, go ahead. This goes back, and I want to get this right. It goes back to this idea of stranger family, just to hook you up. It, it goes back to Leviticus 17. And what Nasi, this was the turning point yesterday. What Nasi was talking about in terms of Yom Kippur and where right. in the 14th verse, uh, in the 15th verse, when it begins to um, that is. wrap up, you know, this life is in the flesh and the blood and the blood of atonement and stuff like that. It says, and every soul that eateth that which dieth of itself or that which was torn with beast, whether it be of your own country or stranger mm -hmm. or right. stranger. there it is. It's not so much. We not so much talking about you, you can't focus so much on the allegorical narrative but you got to focus on these central terms here that are being used here this is referring to a stranger what we right. saw in genesis said that you will be a stranger you the right. stranger. you the stranger trying to get back trying to make atonement trying to trying to uh now see reacquaint yourself with your divinity with Crazy. your own divinity. So I'm talking about if we get this, this is brilliant. This is just brilliant. This is just brilliant. Um, I, I'm having an epiphany. May I say something? Yeah. Uh, now, see, Can't you know, I used to always tell you if I didn't make the sundown or have everything done at sundown, I, we would always read those scriptures and say, whoever do any servile work, he shall surely die. Yeah. And how, man, how am I going to die? But you know, die means divide. So, you know, it's something else in those scriptures. We have to find what it was saying, what we had to do so that we would not become divided from ourselves, from our divinity. That's what the die is. Okay, and, and the one thing we got to realize when we took on this human form, I know it's paradoxical. We already dead, y'all. <laughs> we already we divided. We, we already divided. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> you know. So, family, this is this is great. This is great. Um, so, continuing on, if there's no questions, no other comments, continuing on. But we want to tie this into, you know, how this, you know, the heal, the blood, and all that, as yes, I just yes. said, you know. Now, what we have to do at this point, we well, now we have to go to the 25th chapter of the book of Genesis. Okay. Genesis, the 25th chapter. Because now I want us to understand. We stopped yesterday at this intruder. This is where we stopped off at. We came right up to the intruder. And what we said that the intruder was, you know. <laughs> Unwell. And, right. So we, we want to go back to there and go right into Genesis, the 25th chapter, so that we can understand this connection here. So... <clears throat> We're going to pick up uh, in the instructions where it says the heel from 1617 are protuberant. And we went to the English definition 1646 from Latin pro forward plus tuber, hump, swelling. That's the etymology. Two, 
forcing itself into consciousness. Now, I didn't, this come out the dictionary found me. Yeah. Forcing itself into consciousness. All right. Obtrusive, obtrude. Verb 1613, to thrust out, to extrude, to force or impose as oneself or one's ideas. That's what the mind has done without warrant or request to become unduly prominent or interfering thrust 13th century verb to push or drive with force shove to to cause to enter or pierce something by or as by pushing now this is no this is this dualistic mindset now that everybody then fallen under the influence of as we descended into this death cycle then we use the word intruder it said to thrust oneself in without invitation permission or welcome as an unwelcome intruder is this mind that is programmed it's programmed to do what to what force itself into consciousness make you believe that what what's happening with the brain what's happening with the heart it's all connected to quote unquote the mind and the brain being the same thing it's just not so family we must make an important connection starting with our devolution and descent into the material physical plane we must magnify the meaning of the heel as we emanate it into this physical realm. Now we're going to Genesis 25 and 26. I read. And after that came his brother out and his hand, take note, took hold on Esau's heel at 1619 and his name was called jacob and isaac was three score years 60 when she bare them genesis 25 26. now the word hand here 30 27 strong number the word whole 207 hand 30 27 and whole is 207 and the word heal 6119 now we're connecting this up here we must make the connection to the two words deceitful that went back to yesterday 6121 so you already see the connection to deceitful and the heal you already see it 6119 is the heal and deceitful is 6121. And the heel 1619 with the other two terms 3027, the hand, and 207, the whole. The heel 1619, and I said two is three. The concept of the hand. 3027, Yad, a primitive root, a hand, the open one, indicating power, means directions, in distinction from 3709, the closed one, the closed hand, 3709 is cough the hollow hand or palm, uh -huh. the closed one. <laughs> From 3721, cough, prime root to curve, to bow down self, to bow down self. Now we're gonna read the scriptural references. 
verses 27 through verse 29. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment. This is Jacob coming to his father. And he father blessed him and said, see, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord blessed. The Lord has blessed. That's 1788, 1288, I'm sorry, 1288, Barak. Therefore, verse 28, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Now listen, family. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that curses thee and bless be that blesses thee. Family, if we do not understand, we curse ourselves and we bless ourselves. That's correct. You know nothing going to bless you or nothing going to curse you other than right. yourself. That's right. When you fall into duality, you have already what? Cursed yourself. That's right. And when you come out of duality, you have blessed yourself. That's right. Continue on. The smell of the field. And the word field is 7704. And it's pronounced Sade or Sadi, which the Lord, you, and I'm saying the Lord, you is the Lord, must bless. 1318, Barak, a prime root to kneel by implying to bless yourself as an act of adoration, the act of adoring implies an enhancing by something beautiful in itself. Example, by loving oneself to the Hebraic concept of Sade or Sadi, which is from an unused root, mean to spread out, family. You see, we've been in this little, little narrow dualistic way of doing things. Yes, yes. It's now time to spread out into wholeness and oneness and divinity. So you're going to see the fitness and you're going to see the choices of all things belong to you. A feel as fat mean richness and choices. Country, feel, land, soil, in our journey, in this dispensation, the field, the land, the ground, the soil, the country has become the energy attractive field of divinity and wholeness within consciousness at rest and in motion. Now, this is where we are found. This is where we must come to, where everything provides richness and the choices yes, of everything. Yes, yes. And it can only occur when you make it back to divinity and wholeness. Other than that, you remain in this what narrow perspective of duality, never understanding as to how the mind has tricked you and has become an unwelcome intruder you know, into causing you to be what? A servant in the realm of duality forever. Yes, yes, yes. You do not, you understand, get out of consciousness. I mean, get out of uh, duality. So we're going to stop right here and we're going to ask this any question. Hopefully that we see now because we focusing on this mind. Now we're going to show how this mind and this heel and this blood all comes together. Okay, so let's see how Esau responded to the blessing that his father gave unto Jacob, his brother, 
is revealed in the narrative in these verses below. Okay, and this is verse uh, 37 to 41. Okay, 37. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thou Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants, and with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, E-V-E-N, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Now I read that word E-V-E-N for a reason. This is the event. The event, not the even, but the event. This, the blessing would be the event. What would take place after what the father or uh, what you would do. This would be the event, okay? Say so he wept, you know. Verse 39, and Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, fatness of the earth, okay? And of the dew of heaven from above, the richness and the choices of all things only occurs, you understand, when you get back to access to your divinity. So in the fall, now richness and the choices became the physical places on the earth, the physical things that everybody is in the pursuit of, what we call the choices thing, the richest thing, the materialistic thing. So everybody is now running after materialism because of what? The devolution, the fall, they misunderstood thing. That's because of division again. Richness is not, you know, uh, relative to all things being what? Holistic and all things in divinity and oneness that everything is everything based on sound, you know, right. and light being everything in everything. Richness becomes a part of it. But richness is lost and in short, it's lost its wholeness into dualism. So here now you see the two brothers then what? separated as the narrative gives us. But as I said, we're not talking about two brothers. So let us continue on. And he says, and, thou, and by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother. So now here we go, the sword. Now, many of us have been told to say, the sword is the word of God. Okay, so the sword is what? Some words. Now, so we see now when we talk about this sword, you know, then we talk about a two-edged sword. So the two-edged sword, you understand, they say, well, oh, it cut coming and going, you know, but the two-edged sword becomes what? Dualism, you know? So it goes on to say, verse 40, and by thy sword shall thou live, dualism and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. Now, we put this in the physical realm. We would say white people hate black people and black people hate white people. If you put it in this physical term, and Esau said in his heart, here we go, Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Well, what is the father other than consciousness? Father's everything are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. So, here we find our insight here. 
the blessing that was given to Jacob, and the moment Esau became aware, he began weeping. Baha, a prime word to weep, generally to bemoan, bewail, complain, make lamentation. You remember we said we were going to end up in lamentation, right? <laughs> lamentation is where we're going to end it at. But we pick it up already in Genesis. So we can see how the continuity and how wholeness causes all things to interlock and interrelate and interconnect, you know, in everything as we would see this oneness. At this point of our journey, we desire it to be clear to the family that by any way, are uh, we by any way are we saying by the stretch of one's imagination that by crying you can and will bless yourself uh any <laughs> <laughs> so now we know this beware and, and we know because what have we been doing as a people but complaining <laughs> ever since every time we turn around we have complained about something hot weather, cold weather, we just complain, 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 complain. I don't have this and that, you know, so-and-so did this, complain, bemoan, cry, continuously, because we went away from, quote, unquote, the blessings of divinity. We must not forget that you and your father are one. You are in the father and the father in you. For you and the Father are one. Here we are simply referring to consciousness at rest as wholeness as the Father. As the Father. Okay? So, let us halt here. And now we're getting ready to go into a very important point. If those of us that have been bemoaning and be crying, asking ourselves, what has happened? Why it has happened? That, that, that. If there's no question, we will jump right into it. Comments, questions. Okay. This portion here will be under the title the womb, W-O-M-B, your mother, yourself. The womb, your mother, yourself. How the first nine months shape the rest of your life. Now we're talking in the physical plane now. The blood relation to life of the flesh, to the pregnancy of the mother of her fetus. This is taken from Time Magazine, October the 4th. I'm sorry. Yeah, October the 4th, uh, which is the ninth month, 2010. Okay, October the 4th, ninth month, October 4th, 2010. This is where this article was taken from. And we're going to show you all what we've been talking about in terms of this journey from consciousness at rest, wholeness, to motion animation as a new matrix to the heart back to rest. Anytime I put it on hold for a minute. Gotcha. Okay, we were talking about the womb, your mother, and yourself. Now, I want us to pay close attention here to what happens in the descent. So, just like Sharana was saying about life, we remember that life for us only begins when we come forth out the, out the womb of the mother. That's, that's how we've been taught, you know? So, 
where where did the life of the mother come from the life of the father that was involved we have to understand the difference between the you know the energy of consciousness the life force in the upper you understand yes water and the lower water you yeah know, the up yeah. the lower you have to make this connection here so we can get to understand exactly what we're saying so here we go this particular article it says cancer heart disease obesity depression scientists can now trace adult health to the nine months before birth let me read that again cancer heart disease obesity depression scientists can now trace adult health to the nine months before birth and we're going to take our time here read through some of these points what makes us the way we are question why are some people predisposed to be anxious overweight or asthmatic how is it that some of us are prone to heart attacks, diabetes, or high blood pressure? You see how all of this is tied in, family? <laughs> There's a list of conventional answers to these questions. We are the way we are because it is in our genes the DNA we inherited at conception. We, tu we turn out the way we do because of our childhood experiences, how we were treated and what we took in, especially during those crucial first three years of our health and well-being stem from the lifestyle choices we make as adults, what kind of diet we consume, how much exercise we get. But there's another powerful source of influence you may not have considered, your life as a fetus, the kind and quantity of nutrition you receive in the womb, the pollutants, drug, and infections you were exposed to during gestation, your mother's health, stress level, and state of mind while she was pregnant with you. All these factors shape you as a baby and a child and continue to affect you to this day. Now, all these terms you done already heard in the teaching we just brought forward. That's right. This is the provocative, continu provocative continuation of a field known as fetal origins, whose pioneers assert that the nine months of gestation constitute the most consequential period of our lives, permanently influencing the wiring of the brain and the functioning of organs such as the heart, liver, pancreas, the conditions we encounter in utero, they claim shapes our susceptibility to disease, our appetite and metabolism, our intelligence and temper, temperament. In the literature on the subject, which has explored, exploded over the past 10 years, 
you can find references to the fetal origins of cancer, cardiovascular disease, allergies, asthma, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, mental illness, even of conditions associated with old age, like arthritis, osteoporosis, wow, and cognitive decline. Let's stop right here. Family, what we've read up to this point has everything to do with Toronto family, has everything to do with in the decline from, you know, divinity and wholeness. You, 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 you're going to have to contact all of these things in duality. There's no way around it. So a good diet and all that may make you feel good for a cycle of time, but going back to what we said about the mind, what happened? It runs its course, you know? It wear out, you know? It cannot sustain life eternal. The mind cannot sustain life eternal because it puts things in what? Duality. It takes things out of divinity unity oneness and wholeness so how do we expect to have continue good health and continue to what live in a peaceful happy way it's just not going to happen not in duality so i want to make that point so that we can see how vital it is for us to understand you know the teachings that we are what providing based upon how the ancestors has blessed us. Any questions, any comments to anything up to this point? No, simply get out of duality and get out of your mind. Get out. <laughs> get, get out. out. <laughs> Stay out. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Opinion on them. The notion of parental influence may conjure a fibulous attempt to enrich the fetus playing Mozart to a pregnant belly and the like. In reality, the shaping and molding that goes on in utero is far more visceral and consequential than that, than that, much of what pregnant women encounter in her daily life, the air she breathes, the food and drink she consumes, the chemicals she exposed to, even the emotion she feels is shared in some fashion with her fetus. The fetus incorporates these offerings 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 into its own body uh, makes them part of its flesh and blood often it does something more it treats the maternal contributions as in formation biological postcards from the world outside. Let me read that again. Often it does something more. It treats these maternal contributions as information, biological postcard from the world outside. Now let me go back. Oh, we must go back. Oh, one second. Friend. We asked the question about the mind. The mind is an artificial intelligence. It is outside of you. It is animated by dualistic frequency. Is that what we just said there, what we just read? 
Yeah. Family. Family. You got to hear this. Let me read it again. Often, it does something more. It treats the maternal contribution as information, biological postcards from the world outside. When a fetus is absorbing in utero, it is not Mozart's magic flu, but the answers to questions much more critical to its survival. Will it be born into a world of abundance or scarcity? Will it be safe and protected? Or will it face constant dangers and threats? Will it live a long, fruitful life or a short, harried one? Now, in this part here, it says heart disease was supposed to be all about genetics or adult lifestyle factors. People scoffed at the idea that it could have anything to do with intro, intro, how you spell this? I N T R A U T E R I N E, intrauterine experience. Intrauterine. Intrauterine. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, intrauterine experience. It's all right. So we go back now. Artificial intelligence is outside of you. The mind is animated by dualistic frequency, whereas consciousness is organic intelligence. It's inside of you and is animated by the heart frequency. So the heart frequency has to be connected to, you know, consciousness, wholeness, divinity, unity, and oneness. So here we find, and we got a couple more points and we're going to jump out of here. Here we find a couple of key points. The origin of the fetal origin. The origins of the fetal origin. Two decades ago, a British physician named David Barker noticed an old correlation of a map. The poorest region of England and Wales were the ones with the highest rates of heart disease. Why would this be? He wondered. When heart disease was supposed to be a condition of affluence, of sedentary lifestyle and rich food, he decided to investigate, and after comparing the adult health of some 15,000 individuals with their birth weight, he discovered an unexpected link between small birth size, often an indication of poor parental nutrition, and heart disease in middle age. Faced with an inadequate food supply, Barker conjectured that the fetus diverts, diverts nutri nutrients to its most important organ, the brain, while skimping on other parts of the body. A debt that comes due decades later in the form of a weakened heart and we're going to stop right there in the form of a weakened heart what we would is to show the connecting to the blood the heart the brain and the mind so all of the negative because it doesn't matter if you're in duality you're going to be affected you're going to be affected. That's the bottom line we want to make. You can't escape it. Duality will not allow you to escape all the is that is directly connected to the fall, the devolution into physicality. So now we see now, this becomes vital to understand. 
how important and essential it is for us to understand what we're really talking about, about ascension. And as we started off talking about Jacob's ladder, ascending and descending, we have to understand there is a realm of consciousness that one can reach, and we use David Hawkins to give us, and that is what, uh, what's that, 350 uh, neutrality? That starts the process. It starts the process of moving away from the lower level of 200, 200 or below, which is responsible for all the problems, you know, that we have been occurring in this split, in this division, in this duality. So, ascension, consciousness, we have to understand that that relationship of wholeness, divinity, and unity is our what? Father, our home, our place of returning. We got to get there, however it takes us, if we are to talk about immortality. So with that family, we're gonna say wholeness and ask if any questions, comments, and we will close out tomorrow.